All three of these vessels performed spectacularly. They're all well thought out. They're all well polished. They have great designs. They have great features, easy to use controls, logical interfaces, beautiful displays and programming on the displays. They have additional features that each one has that makes it special and unique and well done. So I'd like to thank these three users for these creations and likewise i'd like to thank all the applicants and contestants of this challenge that said i have to make the tough decision of ranking them so i will rank them and go through final thoughts and remarks of what makes each one of these ships special and what i like and what i would maybe do a little bit different so we're gonna start off with this one the amphibious creation by user Mark. I do love the display interfaces. I love the bridge area, to be honest. And if I may, I will actually want to make my own version of this ship to some extent, take for, take little bits of inspiration. I already have with terms of your um, system here, taken this inspiration and I love this display. I do think that the interior area here is very nice i would like to see some health like i see here we got the welding and the fire extinguisher but i always like to heal myself and this area here is kind of useless like there's just a little desk here this one doesn't have that so i'd probably put some symmetry personally and i'd probably put some equipment in this in these two areas by the door but this sort of dashboard slash helm area with these buttons and controls is spectacular now this area here, very useful, like you mentioned, you could put a truck or car here, tons of survivors, there's even beds, there's a lot of equipment, we got fire hoses up here, winches, everything. So this is jam packed with uh, all kinds of equipment that you'll need and that you'll use. Um, one thing that I would probably say is it would be nice to have some interior uh, seats for survivors maybe along this back wall, but, or if this was a little bit bigger, just so, or maybe even here, but just so in case there's super bad weather conditions and you can't keep the people sitting outside, it would be nice to have an interior place for them. Also, one other thing, like I mentioned in the other video, is this door, I'd prefer to see this as a sliding door, so it doesn't um, get, like, you don't, you don't walk up the stairs and trap yourself behind it. And then behind here, we have these random blocks that I mentioned that I probably would want to see removed. The other comment that I will have, this is very nice and useful, more storage and more equipment. But down here, <laughs> the engine room, I understand that it's for like repair work and such, but the uh, bedroom berth up here, if I can make my way through this maze, there we go. The bedroom berth up here is uh, useful, so that's a good thing. I mean, it gets the job done as far as um, usefulness, like you could sleep here, no pooping of course, and there's a nice photo of Lord Bison and some other nice pictures up here, <laughs> but um, I would probably, I mean, I, I like it as like a little bit of lore or like a little bit, little secret area, um, but maybe I would probably put this to be a little sleeping berth like this room instead of being a uh, equipment storage because look you have so much equipment stacked everywhere there this would make a nice little um bedroom and you got the window there too so like if you do need to grab a little rest that would probably be a decent area for that uh otherwise the last comment is probably the balancing i mean i understand that the engine and the weight and everything like the distribution is one of those things that you can't really deal with when you have a creation like this but you do have this very sloped area in the front so maybe some optimization or rebalancing of the weight will prevent it from kind of sitting flooded on this back end here which again isn't a huge deal but just one of those things that would polish it up to the next level Otherwise, I love it. I loved this thing from the beginning. From the moment I saw it, I thought it was just one of those unique and cool looking creations that stands out. 
Again, you could park a car on the deck, you could use it as a docking vehicle, you can also drive it up on shore with these amphibious wheels. So tons of effort and detail went into this, and I really do love this creation. So for that reason, I'm going to award your creation mark position or rank number three. So this is the third favorite creation of mine that was released in this uh, build challenge. Huge pat on the back, congratulations, and thank you for your participation in this event. Next, we're going to look at Shorker's search and rescue boat, the Ruse QRF-14 was its name. Now we're going to hop aboard here. Love this whole rear end, love the shape of the vessel to be honest. Very useful uh, equipment areas, which are honestly ex like extremely well concealed and nice. Um, there is obviously some worry with too many painted areas or uh, movable parts or bodies or whatever, but there was no restriction for that, so I'm not going to mention any of that. Um, I love this inflatable life raft, all these kind of bars around the ship that you could actually make your way around without falling off. The fact there is this in the front is super smart and useful. Again, the shape of the whole thing, the work with pivots to make this all come together and kind of look the part, even though I did not allow any kinds of modded sections, is awesome. Like, great use of detailing and decor, well thought out. Love the little ramp on the rear end here. And then, of course, we step in. Oh yeah, beautiful mast too. Now we step in, and you have this well thought out seating area. You just have six seats, which is perfect. There's more down there, but six is enough for here. All kinds of equipment all over the place, which is perfect. And if you take a look at all these awesome lights and features too, I mean, that's one of those things that you also have to <laughs> pay attention to, like how well thought out all that is because that does help guide you at night so all that stuff is there the uh, pilot seat including all these lights there's a whole user manual on the uh, creations sort of uh, workshop where all these colors were explained what each color does all that good stuff love the systems by the way like these two systems and how they kind of show things when you turn things on or off like i do think that that is a really nice use of um these systems and the fact that you could cycle them so you could actually put like this up there or you could cycle them to have this here and this here so i really do love the use of all that of course you have um in addition to this down here this little area we get a bed for sleeping and more seating areas a little kitchenette with a microwave this door is very useful when you are trying to bring people in as we saw you got all these signs a little picture of the boat and then if you make your way through here you get the engines nice modular engine design one thing that i found quite interesting is the fact that there is no door uh, to close off this uh, engine room area now Obviously, it's by design, but it would maybe be interesting to consider putting a door. I don't know if the hull maybe didn't allow it to see there's this kind of little shape here, or it was just intended to be open. But a door will also not only prevent flooding, but also um, I understand that the air in this one big area doesn't need to have multiple filters and stuff. So I do get that as well. Interesting way to, to cool off the engine as well. The tanks are all here, so everything's here. Um, the bed is good for sleeping, obviously. It would be nice if there was a uh, medical bed, but regardless, I mean, even as it is, you get your coffee maker, a really nice detailed coffee maker, and tons of equipment. Now, one thing that I will mention is the actual controls, like we had here, um, is not 100% clear to me, but I do understand when you have the pitch and roll trim that it prevents it from... It makes it more stable, that's what the instructions read. I do like this system and setup. Uh, maybe the instrument panel is a little busy, I will say. That's one of the sort of remarks I'll have. And then back here, I always find an issue with this type of uh, 
like having this type of systems where you can break the whole thing. Yeah, so now it's broken. Anyway, this this type of thing is always nice to use a sliding hatch, I find, at least for one of them, so you don't end up with this kind of interference. Because this is, like, if you do this during rescue mission and now your doors are toast, it's going to flood and it's going to cause huge problems for you. So up here it's fine. This doesn't block anything or anyone. But this door there, like, now we kind of end up with this situation where everything is a little bit broken. And again, that's user error, but stuff like that happens as well mid kind of stress during a stressful situation. So... That would be one of my comments, as well as kind of the over, um, not over complexity, I don't want to say, but just very intricate dashboard. Um, obviously, though, if you learn it, then I think that you would, like, if, if the person, if the user takes the time to learn this, then they're going to excel and be able to very much use this to their full ability. But I think that sometimes a more uh, basic, or call it... Um, user-friendly system is better. Large keypad, little things like this, it could be sort of labeled, but I think that's not very much the case. Most of these are labeled and they work very well. So all in all, a beautiful creation, a like very fun to use and very stable, especially once it gets out of the water and it kind of uses these, um, uses the lift function, it ends up being fast. It just skims right over the waves and it's very stable. I guess another critique, if I may, again, I'm just telling this as my own kind of analysis, but not to bash on you, of course, is maybe some sort of thrusters to help steer or guide, because I found that while these are very good at steering, and maybe I just don't know how to use it, because they are mounted on pivots, maybe you could rotate the whole thing around, hmm. But anyway, what I was going to say is without any kind of um, thrusters mounted on the side, you may end up with sort of a... Uh, situation where you can't um steer or enter areas as easily so these ones do move but not all the way anyway i found that the steering is relatively good so it's not that big a deal but maybe in tight situations it will impede you like a little bit during our uh rescue mission where you had to kind of weave through a very slender area but all in all a beautiful creation huge pat on the back and thank you for submitting it because not only does this one look the most, I'd say, like a search and rescue boat out of these three, it also performs spectacularly, and it is very fun to use. So, well done, and this creation is awarded the second position for this reason. I really do love it. Huge pat on the back, and congratulations for making second position. Which brings us to the winner of our second build challenge, the Starter Boat Gloat. It is by user Matt20003. Maybe it's Matt20003, but regardless, Matt has won this challenge with this beautiful boat. Again, like I've said multiple times, it's shaped like a bullet. It's just so sleek looking. It has a very low profile. Beautiful little designs too, like this t sort of like boomerang style area here. And otherwise well thought out and super easy to use this ship is just one of those ones where once you find the breaker button which i took a little bit of time to find it i will admit but once you find this button and turn on the master breaker and then turn on the displays and then if you want to turn on the engines but just um honestly so nice and easy to operate love the microcontrollers that come with with it like the cycling lights, deck lights, but look at this simple, like, little dashboard. It just looks so nice. Like, it looks so sleek and so user-friendly. Like, there's not so many buttons, and you're kind of just using what you have. So all this stuff plays a big role, and that is why this is the winner. I mean, when I saw this, otherwise, a simple interior... I don't see just equipment lined up everywhere, but you have the right amount of equipment positioned here. You got these seats positioned here. This very modern and almost like cockpit-like uh, helm here. So I really do like that. And then, of course, if you make your way down here, 
the seating area you got this forward compartment with some diving gear you could e you could even refill the air which is useful so that's a nice feature there's a bed around the corner here so a useful space a good size wonderful controls I'm very happy with with the controls of this especially after learning that the throttle itself is um, it does have a little bit of play here beautiful display like this display with the boxes around it and the various areas and like the coloring and everything is just like I'd say perfect as far as it, like one single display telling you everything you need to know over here we got a different station which is nice overall love this creation love what it has and how it all works and honestly well done if you turn on these work lights that's like the spotlight i guess then you get your front lights you could cycle the wheelhouse lights i'm not quite sure if this should turn on at some point but regardless maybe engines have to be on regardless love this creation one of the comments that i may have is again this interaction with the uh the doors this sort of causes a problem or a conflict so it would have been nice maybe to have a sliding door back here but then you wouldn't have this window so i do understand that as well uh down here my biggest comment is these seats like i'd probably like to see them up against the wall maybe a medical bed here instead but um like like it kind of just looks like a a movie room maybe we should put a movie theater screen up here and then it'll all make sense this is where they could watch a movie while they go but regardless um i love even the floors painted like the hardwood you get your heater on element here little bed area here not sure if there's some discoloring or if this is intentional and i would have liked to maybe see a little bit more decor here but you do have these drawers so nice little bedroom area and this is a functional and useful area as well. See, they do have storage. Actually, I missed that the first time around. So that is useful for sure. Um, again, like this door is glitching through the wall. That's just one of the downsides, I guess, of using these these types of doors. But all in all, really nice boat and really easy and fun to use. Another comment, though, if I just may, is the use of like all these paintable signs for sure increase the lag you can see even my computer is lagging with these three ships here but whatever i mean it's a it's a personal touch and it's a personal choice and i think that it's all in all serves the function of being very useful and well done now with the systems on we actually do have the hose that works here so that's one of the things that i actually missed earlier or not missed, but I ended up using the front, um, the front water cannon. But I think that when you have the uh, system that you could use by hand, I prefer it personally. It's much easier to operate. So it has both. It has the water cannon on the front, or you could have two hoses on the side. You have the engine access here. Beautiful modular engines. Even have these maintenance hatches, which I thought was such a cool little detail. Um, it is tough to close the door after the fact. You have to kind of get your way around here, but whatever. And this Elephant Industrial, the branding throughout the whole thing is really sweet. And um, overall, again, sweet ship. I know I've said it a bunch of times, but a lot of fun to use. And those are the reasons it is number one. So I'd like to thank all the participants for participating in this build challenge. I'd like to thank especially these three users in participating and providing these awesome vehicles for me to run the final trial tests on, to my admin, to my Discord server people, to my members, everybody, everybody watching on YouTube. We hit 4,000 subscribers. That's a huge deal for me. I'm so stoked and love the fact I'm able to provide content for people to enjoy, watch, and learn things. So stay tuned for more content, more creations. We're going to be hitting you with another build challenge soon here, as soon as I get my bearing on things. And otherwise, and as always, happy Stormworksing, everyone.